Hi, my name is Monique Polak and I'm a writer for children who lives in Montreal. And um, today I've come to you uh, via video <laughs> uh, to do a little talk about um, something called board books and to tell you about one of my books for kids, which is a board book. So first I should tell you that um, I write a lot of books for kids. I've published 29 in total. Um, and I'm also a teacher at Marinopolis College, so I'm used to teaching older kids. And a board book is a book for very, very young readers. And um, I've only written one, and that's because it was really hard to do, but who knows, maybe I'll, I'll do another one someday. And maybe once I tell you about board books, you'll learn a little bit about it, and you might want to try one too. Um, okay, so I'm going to show you the board book that I'm going to talk to you about and it's called Passover Family. Here it is. I'll hold it in front so you can have a good look. Passover Family and there you can see it's by me, Monique, and uh, the publisher is Orca Book Publishers. So first let me explain to you what a board book is, okay? It's called a board book because it's made out of cardboard. Now who, what age kid would want to read or Actually, they wouldn't read it. Someone would read it to them, likely a parent, maybe a babysitter, maybe someone at daycare, okay, or an older brother or sister. So a board book is made of hard cardboard, and that's why we call it board for short. And that's because for very young readers, they don't just like to listen to stories. They like to chew on books. <laughs> so if they just have a little paperback, very soft, they could chew through it or tear it or so on. So these have very hard pages. Okay, now a board book in mostly has very, very few words. And the rule is never more than 100 words. And most of the books that I write, like uh, the book I'm working on now, I could show you, I'm sitting on the floor, but there's my desk. Um, the book I'm working on now is for older teenagers and it has 45,000 words. So imagine writing only 99, 100 words. It's crazy. Wouldn't you think it would be so easy? But here's what I have to tell you. It's really hard. I have to say, I think it's the hardest thing I ever did was turning my idea that I had for Passover family into a book that actually worked. Okay, so, and I wrote it many, many times until my publisher was satisfied. And in fact, this is a true story. At one point, I said to my publisher, fire me, this is too hard, I don't wanna do it, I'm no good at it, I'm just terrible at writing a board book. And they said, no way, Monique, we believe in you, and you can do it, and I did it. Anyway, the reason they asked me to write the board book was because I had written a book for older kids called Passover Festival of Freedom. This is a non-fiction book, so I knew something about Passover. Now, the idea for a board book is really to boil your idea down, right? To boil it down to what's the most important, to what's the most essential, and to write it in a way that little kids would enjoy. So when we talk about little kids, we're talking about like... Uh, Babies, right? You could even read it to the youngest baby that you know, right? Up till about age, I don't know, four, three, four. That's the board book audience. And what I really love about writing a board book is that my book might be one of the first books that a little kid reads, right? And maybe they'll always, maybe they'll always remember that book, or maybe it's a book that the parents know the kid likes and that the child will ask, hey, well, read me the book again or pick the book up for, to have the parent read it to them. So it's pretty exciting when you think about it. And that's one of the reasons that I do love writing for kids because I think that we can give young readers good habits and hopefully make them into lifelong readers and library goers. Okay, so I'm gonna read to you a little bit from my book called Passover Family, just a bit, because I want to, re if I read the whole thing, well, you won't want to go to the library and get the book out, right? So I'll just read you the beginning, and then I'll tell you what I was trying to do when I wrote it. And I have to show you that it has photographs in it to illustrate the book. All board books do. You wouldn't just have words for kids. You'd have you'd have pictures as well. And the pictures are, are real people that I know. I didn't take them, but um, my friends in Vancouver, where my publisher is, it's, it's their kids. Okay. Passover Family by Monique Polak. Me. Okay. In 
this is a usual Passover, not during a pandemic where we all have to have our Passovers virtually or using the internet. This is the old fashioned Passover where everybody comes to your house for supper or you go to your grandparents or your cousins. Okay. Ding dong, your aunts, uncles, and your cousins are here. There they are. Here's a little baby. Grandma has spring flowers. Grandpa wants a kiss. Watch out for his scratchy beard. Your cousins bounce you up and down and down and up. Look at all the food we made. Open wide for something yummy. Daddy tells the best stories. One's about a baby like you who grew up strong and brave. That's as far as I'm reading, okay? So you have to go to the library and get my book and read it to the baby at your house or one that you know. Okay, so now I'm going to tell you what I was trying to do. Okay, so first we start with a, with a sound of ding dong and little kids like that, right? There's a word for this. It's called onomatopoeia. It's very long very hard to spell. You don't really have to remember it. But ding dongs like woof woof would be an example of or chirp chirp noises or drip drop. And kids like onomatopoeia. It's a sound that's it's a word that sounds like the, the sound it's, it's describing. So it's about family. And if you know a little bit about Passover, you'll know that what perhaps is the most important of all is that it brings families together. Okay. So everyone's coming, right? The aunts, uncles, and cousins. And then when I say grandma has spring flowers, it lets me introduce the idea of what time of year does Passover take place. So just like now, it is Passover, and there's little crocuses in my front garden. So these are spring flowers. Grandpa wants a kiss. Watch out for his scratchy beard. So what I'm doing there is I'm really talking to the kid, right? The little one. Watch out for his scratchy beard. And that's something a small child would notice. Your cousins bounce you up and down and down and up. I like that line. I like it because it gives the feeling of the bouncing. Up and down and down. Hold on, I'm getting it wrong. Up and down and down and up, right? So the feeling of the bouncing that you can capture in the language, right? I really enjoy that part of writing. Look at all the food we made, okay? So that's because Passover is all about food. And here you see the matzah and the special, the horseradish and the bitter herb and the eggs. So these are all the foods that are associated with Passover. So we need to get that in the story too. Open wide for something yummy. That's talking to the little kid again, like how you really would say to a little child. And then I'll just end with the last part, okay? So daddy tells the best stories. One's about a baby like you who grew up strong and brave. Now that's a reference to something that's, that's sort of historical, very well known, and very important about the Passover holiday. And that's a story about Moses. And Moses himself was a baby who grew up, in, who grew up with the Egyptians and later found out that, that he was a Jew. And he's the one who helped bring the Jews to, their, to freedom. And it took many, many years and that's what Passover the story is about. So I never really explain because my books for such little kids, there's no point teaching them about Moses, or at least I decided it wasn't going to be a book about Moses. It was going to be a book for little kids and to experience for them, from their point of view, what Passover would feel like. So the family, the food, the flowers, Grandpa Scratchy Beard. And as I said, Go to the library, get my book, and see what happens in the rest of the book. And another thing that you can do is start thinking about maybe the kind of book you want to write. Maybe you want to try to write a board book. My publisher made me rewrite that book at least 10 times till I got it right. So whatever you do, you have to be prepared that it's going to take time. And a board book is super short, right? They're only, they're, they're only about 100 words at most. So every word has to be right. And that means going over it a lot to get those 100 words. And if you're going to be a writer, you need to be prepared to spend a lot of time on the reviewing. And another little tip is when you write, read it out loud to see how it sounds, right? Because when I read this out loud to you today, it was easy, super easy for me because when I wrote that book, I read it out loud 
I don't know, how many times? I want to say a million, that would be exaggerating. But 500, that's not exaggerating, okay? So I wish for you that you um, have a good Passover. And I wish for you that you take good care of yourselves and your loved ones and the community and the whole world during this pandemic. And I wish for you that you enjoy reading and writing and maybe making pictures or music because it's good for us to make things. And I know that I really am happy. I think I'm at my happiest when I'm making books. And I'm also pretty happy that I got to make this video today and meet you. And maybe next time I'll meet you in person. Okay. Uh, happy Passover. Happy reading. Happy writing. Stay safe and healthy. Bye.